let's turn to the topic of world peace, the book Better Angels of Our Nature. It will be available afterwards. Uh, let me ask you a general question. Let, let's say it were possible by spending $10,000 and devoting a few months of your life to it, that any person on earth could blow up a significant part of a major city. They could buy something, some kind of explosive. It would cost them $10,000. How long would it take before someone actually did this? Yeah, anywhere on Earth? Anywhere on Earth. Uh, Seven billion people on Earth, any one of them that can come up with the 10K mm -hmm. and have a desire to do it, which is yeah. not most people, of course. Right. But how long would it take before this would happen? Oh, I have no idea. Um, and, and by blow up, do you mean like the Tsarnaev brothers, or do you mean like what? Hiroshima? Like Hiroshima. Uh, someone on Earth anywhere. Um, yeah, maybe not too long, but, um, you know, I, but I, I don't know. I could, couldn't really prophesy that. But, but, but let me then work back yeah. from that and, and ask you about your optimism about yeah. peace. Is it then your belief it will never be that cheap to blow things up? You know, I, I don't know. My, my optimism doesn't consist of prophecy in that sense. Um, that is, my optimism consists of looking at what has happened and, um, uh, and noting that, first of all, the, that the pessimistic view is factually incorrect. Namely, people believe that we're living in unusually violent times and we're not. Uh, what, how to project that into the future is a separate set of questions, and there, there are many unknowns that I, I just, uh, I'm not arrogant enough to, to know the answer to. Um, it's something that we could debate, we could explore them, but, it, but I, my, I, I am not an optimist in the sense of saying, well, let's just extrapolate the curves uh, in the future without uh, asking questions like mm -hmm. that. But let, maybe you could at least try to talk me out of my pessimism. Okay. <laughs> What I see is that through the course of history, as societies become wealthier, they also find destructive power is cheaper. Mm -hmm. Now, for most people, even today, the destructive power at their hands, while it can be quite terrible, it's not enough to take out a major city or start a war. Uh, but the price of destructive power has been falling for as long as we've had economic growth. And it's hard for me to think of exceptions to that trend. So if I expect economic growth to continue, I expect we'll get in a world in some way a bit like my $10,000 question, how long would it take? And I worry that will happen a few times, and then we will cycle into some fairly significant form of disorder. And that's my default prediction. I don't quite mean to prophesize it, but I take that to be what one normally would expect. And I'm happy for you to talk me out of that. Mm -hmm. But like, what's the weakest premise in, in the chain I've given you? Well, um I guess there are two. two. Um, one is that, uh, that every form of physical accomplishment follows a, you know, uh, an exponential curve of getting cheaper and cheaper. For example, you know, plane travel hasn't gotten faster and faster. If you extrapolate from the Wright brothers to, say, 1957, mm -hmm. then it just totally leveled off. Uh, you know, it, it, in fact, if anything, it might be a little, a little bit slower for, uh, for a number of reasons. Um, so it is not necessarily true that there'll be a $10,000 nuclear uh, weapon. Um, I'm not an, an expert on nuclear proliferation, but my reading is that, that, that there isn't. You still need the thousands of centrifuges and so on. Uh, so that, that's one, at least, topic to explore. Again, I'm, I'm not an optimist in saying, oh, relax, it'll never happen. Yeah. Uh, it's just that this is, but that, uh, on the other hand, I think it's very easy, I think it's too easy to be a pessimist and, just, and to say that um, I can imagine bad things, therefore they are certain, which I think is the, it has been a, a default in a lot of our discourse. Sure. The other is, how much of desire is there for that kind of destruction? That is, uh, we could see the, the rate, uh, I think the rate limiting step on a lot on, on terrorist destruction is how many people think that it's a good idea to cause a lot of damage for no particular reason. Uh, we could have, uh, you know, there could be Tsarnaev brothers in this audience and, and there could be a pressure cooker that would blow up, uh, you know, in the next few minutes. I don't think there will be. Uh, but clearly there's no technological or economic impediment to that. The amount of violence that, that we see is not uh, limited by uh, cost of technology. It's limited by the number of people who think that it would be a good idea to 
blow a lot of stuff up for no, for no reason other than attracting publicity. And there are certain kinds of, of violence that are so pointless that just no one really wants to, wants to do it. One of the reasons that we've gone now 70, more than 70 years without a uh, nuclear weapon being used in war is that they're just not terribly useful as, as uh, weapons to accomplish anything. I mean, they're, they're useful to deter an ex existential threat, an all-out invasion. That's presumably why North Korea wants them. But they haven't been used on the battlefield because leaving a huge radioactive crater is just not a very coherent you know, w war goal. And the, um, uh, for their, I mean, you could imagine some apocalyptic cult where destruction for its own sake is so desirable that they would do anything possible. And we don't know how many people like that there are. L let me try I, and... Sorry. Yeah, but we don't know how many people there are uh, like that there are, and I don't know the answer.